Hello everyone, so it's been a long time since I've done a review of a green light, mainly because I don't like their opening panels, but uh, sometimes you just gotta catch the sales. There was a 20% off sale at the department store. And so I don't have this model. I've been waiting for an Ace model brand to come up, but uh, they're so old and so rare, I've never seen one come up for sale on eBay, so it's probably never gonna happen. But Greenlight will sell one for like less than 10 bucks, so why not go with this? So what we have is the 72 Ford Falcon XB. This is the first car from the first Mad Max movie, where uh, Maxwell Mad Max Rockatansky, uh, played by Mel Gibson, he was offered this car as an incentive to stay with the main, per main force patrol, which was a police unit within the now a post-apocalyptic dystopian Australia and outback, I guess. Basically patrolling the motorways from uh, crazy biker gangs and crazy people. So that is what this vehicle is. He actually turned down the offer, but then, you know, these criminals killed his wife and he went on a revenge rampage with this vehicle to get his uh, revenge. Okay, so this car actually, in the real world actually started out as a 351 cubic inch Australian built 19, uh, well, you know, they, this is interesting. The internet says a 1973 Ford Falcon XB GT hardtop, but that packaging just said 1972. So I'm not sure what's right, the internet or a green light. But uh, John, the art director from the movie, John Dowding, he designed the Interceptor. And so some of the changes they made were the, uh, obviously the black paint, but obviously, uh, I'm sorry, beyond that, the roof and boot spoilers, meaning this roof spoiler, that trunk spoiler, wheel air arches, wheel, wheel, <laughs> wheel arches, boy, I can't talk today. And then these eight uh, exhaust pipes, only two of them actually worked, but they, they vibrated so much, it looked like all of them were working. And then uh, this nose is called a Concord style, by a company called Arcade Pain or Arcade Pane. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So, okay, and then uh, obviously the most prominent would be this supercharger, a Wii N671 supercharger sticking up through the hood, but it wasn't really functional. I think in the movie, I might be mistaken, he had a switch to turn it on, but superchargers don't really work that way. They have a belt attached to the regular engine and it's just always running. So I've never heard of a clutched supercharger. Although that would be pretty cool. Maybe such a thing does exist. Anyways, okay, I'm not an engine expert. Let's get into this uh, review here. So starting on the side, we've got this printing here, which looks pretty accurate to the, uh, to the car. Maybe that's like the police badge or police insignia. You'll notice it's uh, a gray matte finish. Not gray, a matte finish black but it's really poorly applied <laughs> on top of this gloss black. Like, look at that, what, what's going on? It's just not very good. Uh, the tires are all right. There's some dimensionality to the sidewalls. The wheels look pretty good to me. You know, the lug nuts and stuff show in and there's air passing through the spokes, so that's nice. What it is nice is the black does come up here as well. All right, so there's two types of black going on. Uh, this is the gas cap. It's uh, yeah, it's all right, I guess. Door handle, little vent there. Uh, interior is hard to see because it's all black and it's it's just like a Kyosho. Let's see if we can see any more details. Oh, well, yeah, there's a nice detail there. Center console, stick shift here. It's a right-hand drive. Let's see on this side if we can see anything on the dash. Nothing. No, not really. Okay. So are there back seats? It look like there's some back seats as well. Okay, so actually that's a pretty nice interior. It's just, uh, you know, black like the car, so it's accurate. Okay, this side, uh, the black paint's better on this side at least, right? It's not a, it's not messed up like on the other side. So, okay, that's good. All right, going to the front. Now this is where I think uh, Greenlight did a good job. We got some plastic lenses here. And uh, the car has like transparent with gold stripes on it. So this is pretty good. Uh, it's being a goldish kind of plastic. And then these uh, auxiliary lamps here are painted white, which is pretty good. There seems to be some texture in this grill. All right, let's focus. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty neat. And then the uh, the blower, I mean, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, for the price, it's all right. 
maybe a little black paint would be helpful there, but you can't have everything for the price. Uh, this is nice though, the, the matte finish on top of the gloss, so that's good. I'm imagining these are like some sort of quick release bonnet uh, latches. Okay, so my wiper blades, they're molded into the windshield, and no, they're not, I don't think they're painted, but at least they're molded. We got these tiny little like uh, blobby bubble mirrors. Eh, I think the movie car only actually had one mirror on this side. Yeah, that's the case. But I'm guessing Green Knight was... They have other color liveries of this. I've seen a white, red, white, and blue one that looks pretty cool. So they probably made the smart decision of having two mirrors. Okay, well this is a shame. Oh, what is that? It's oil or something. What's going on here? I don't know what kind of residue was on there. Water or oil or something, but... And then, uh, sadly, the roof is, like, could this possibly be paint rash from a fairly new model? It's definitely not nice. I don't, I don't know if it's paint rash or just poor paint from the factory. But, uh, it's not looking as good as the paint on the bottom part of the car. So, that's a real, that's too bad. I mean, this is brand new. Hmm. Alright, well, the wing looks nice. You know, it's thin plastic. And then the rear lights are printed on nicely. Okay, so that's good. I don't know if there's text there or what. No, it's just some black, but there is some text here. MFP, Main Force Patrol. Okay, little key knob, key latch, key lock there. Boy, it's like I totally forgot English today. Sorry. Wow, this is actually really nice at the bottom. I usually don't care about the bottom because I don't display the car upside down, but I mean, you got the leaf springs here, so that's pretty neat. I don't know what this is. It's just some random black plastic. And then, uh, these are plastic, the exhaust pipes. But they're nice. I mean, they're really thin. So, gotta be careful. Those will break off easily. Alright, so this is originally molded in 2017. Okay. And then we got the treaded tires. So, all in all, for the price, is pretty good. Some quality problems, obviously. You know, this paint's a big problem, and then the black paint down here is just totally gone. But uh, other than that, it's all right. Obviously, yeah, the Ace model would probably be better being a resin, but it's also not available. Long sold out, so. Okay, well, let me get Mr. Spins out for a second, and uh, maybe you can compare it to these photos of the real car from the movie. Those are movie shots there. Alright, so let that spin. Now, uh, the Ace models, I'm not going to take it off the stand because they're just way too fragile. So, I, again, on March 7th, 2021, I did a video on these two cars. But uh, the difference is, basically, the first car has an air dam, a lower air dam. Right? You can see it there. Whereas the second one, in the second movie, they removed that lower air dam. And then also, in the second movie, they removed the trunk and Mad Max put in these like 40 gallon fuel tanks for extended range. So, both, both brands did a good job representing this. Now, um, where Greenlight actually did a better job, it seems, is the black paint on the side of the car. See this Ace model, there's no black matte black paint on the side, it's just all gloss. But Greenlight actually did it right, it's, it's matte black here. It's really subtle, it's even hard to tell in the movie photo, uh, the picture on the actually internet. But uh, so, well, anyways, the Ace model did print on the tires, you know, this printing on the tires is on the real movie car. So this is a little more accurate. And the crispness of the wheels here is just, you know, much better, obviously. Um, but looking at, like, the blower, they're not too too far off. It's almost a green... Well, alright. I almost feel like the green light blower is uh, a little more crisp in its details. Like, these lines here are crisper. Those are really fat. But this thing is chromed out. Although, I think in the movie, it's actually not a chromed out uh, supercharger. 
it's just you know the raw aluminum oxidized aluminum but this one here you know they have the black belt painted whereas the green light did not although I could do that pretty easily and then obviously the resin model has got these uh, super thin windows that you could like watch TV through whereas the green light has a lot of distortion because they're molded windows and then the green light windshield wipers are just molded in this one actually has you know bent pieces of metal so it's pretty impressive really okay so let's see on the back this uh, ace model they seem to have put a decal down and then put a photo etched black piece of metal on top of it to show the grill but unfortunately they didn't apply it very nicely so it's all crooked whereas green light played it safe you know it's just molded into the casting and they just have to hit it with some red and orange and it actually looks better than this crookedness of this ace model uh, green light also has mfp if they printed there whereas this one does not so although in the second movie i'm not sure if there's mfp there well in the first movie there is okay i actually think the treads on the green light are better it might be hard to tell because they're in shadow but to my naked eye these treads are better than the uh ace model i think so let's try a front view here now you'll see on the ace model it has better lenses for the headlights you know they're transparent with some gold printed on them like like the real car um hmm. other than that it's not not too much different i mean the green light has the vents here in the front of this concord grill or concord facade or nose whatever you want to call it but you'll notice here on this wow is that a decal wow okay i believe this black here is a decal because i almost feel like my pick can go through this here it's not even whereas green light is definitely part of the casting and they just painted it matte black so it's almost like green light might be better green light also has these uh hood uh, latches or hood pins or whatever Whereas I don't see that on this car. Hmm. Now the mirror on this car is more accurate though. You know, it's a separate piece of plastic where this is just a blob. But I gotta say, Greenlight did a great job. I mean, it's a fraction of the cost. Even if this thing was brand new, like just sold today, I think they were like 60 bucks for the set or something. This is like 10. So this is like one third the cost of that thing. And it's definitely not one third the quality. I would say it's almost on par, maybe half the quality, maybe even better than that. So I'm actually quite impressed. So I don't think I need to buy the Ace model if it ever comes up, because I know it's going to, if it ever does come up, it's going to come up for some sort of insane price that uh, I don't think I'm willing to pay. So I'm going to stick with the green light for now. At least that's my mental thinking right now. Of course, this stuff always changes. It seems as though as the longer I'm in this hobby, I break my own rules. I was just talking to, you know, XLT Off-Road Bear. We, we break our own collecting rules because sometimes you just get bored and you want to buy something, I guess. But anyways, I'm quite happy I got this thing. And uh, yeah, hopefully if you guys like Mad Max, you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, cheerio. Cheerio.